Hello, I am going to try to rack in one rack, racking, raking. I'm going to try to make one more video before the year is over. I have two days. <laughs> so last year for Christmas, my mom bought me one of those like, what would you even call that? It's for like mending um, knitwear, I believe. And I never learned how to use it. I tried once and I didn't automatically know how to use it, so I gave up. Um, let's see. It has kind of a lot of pieces, or at least this one does. And it's just been sitting in my cabinet here this whole time. Let's see. Why do I need. Okay. Alright, let's see. It is one of these. Can you cooperate today, please? Okay, anyway, it's one of these. And the ones that I've seen recently have been square. This one is round. You, like, put it... You put this in your fabric, put this on top, and then you secure it with these huge rubber bands that it came with are on the back. And it's for sewing. You move these back and forth. And it turns the hooks, which turn the stitches on here, so you can go back and forth through them. But I never learned how to use it, and so I think that's what I'm going to do today. I don't know what this is for, though. I didn't notice that this had a hook on it until just now. Wow, thank you, camera. I appreciate that a lot. I think it's for reaching through somewhere at some point, because it has like a little handle on it. I don't know. So I'm going to have to do some research on this, just how to use it really quickly. Because I have my lovely pair of pants here, my, my voluntary assistant experiment for this video. Now, if you are plus sized, you know good old jeans always rip in the thighs. These have elastic in them, so they haven't ripped through all the way, but they're, they're about to. So I want to see just if I can fix them somehow, or would it be worth it to just give in and buy more? The, like, this literally being held in there by the elastic. This is such a curse. Now, I hear you saying, you could just lose the weight. I could. I don't want to. And that's why I don't. Because that's why everybody else doesn't do things that they could do that would probably benefit them. Because they don't want to. I do not hate the size my body is. I have, Really, I have been blessed to never be self-conscious in that way. Because I grew up with two parents who were always affirming me and telling me how much they loved me and how beautiful I was. So, that in and of itself is a blessing. So, I'm going to do some research on this. And then when I come back, hopefully it will be with the perspective of me actually doing it. So, I will see you then. Alright, I'm going to try to throw in a voice over here just because uh, the birds are being quite noisy. You see it is stainless steel. I'm sorry for all the times during these few clips you're going to get blinded. So we're going to settle for it being a little dark. So the first step the lady showed, I'll have to put, I will link her tutorial in the description, is to mark out where you want to sew with like a craft pencil. This is like a chalk stick for crap. There's my forehead. Isn't it lovely? Mark out where you want your square to be. I wasn't going to use all the hooks, but it, was, it would help to have them all face in the same direction. So I just drew out this cute little square over the hole and then I started with the loom itself came with darning needles but they're not sharp enough to go through my pants so I had to use an actual large sewing needle um, I did have to turn the light on I'm sorry just I couldn't see what I was doing with it off because my pants are black working with black colored anything is the worst material to work with so I'm going to put some music in and we'll just watch together, okay? Okay.
Okay, I don't think I was supposed to run out of thread at this point, but I did, so I'm going to attach some more somehow. And the next step, now that you have it on like this, this is the part that I needed help with. I know what to do after this. You just weave it back and forth. The only thing I don't know how to do is casting off, I guess that's what you would technically call it. But the point of these, obviously when you're weaving you go through every other one. So the point of these is after every row, when you secure it with the stitch on each side, then you would flip these over. And it, it basically raises the thread ev like the opposite direction so you could do... So you can go back and forth a lot easier. I don't even know if you can see that. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to turn on the flash for a second. Hopefully I won't blind you. So you see how... You probably can't see. Do you see how these stitches are kind of raised to the top? Can you see that? Can you tell? Probably not. Camera does not want to focus. So when I flip them all to this side, it changes the direction in which they're raised so that I can just go back and forth each time. So should I do the second pass with a different color? Sorry, I'm trying to keep it as still as I can. Um, maybe I, maybe I will. I kind of want to use like a, like a teal color. I'm sorry this is so dark, but this is the only way I can do it without, no, I already have purple. I'll just go ahead and do it with purple. Maybe I'll do the other side with the teal color that I had in mind. I'm just using embroidery floss for this because I feel like it's thick enough that it would be durable. I don't wear these black pants very often, so they've lasted me a while. You know, I alternate. I have a bunch of different pairs of pants and I alternate them so they all last longer. Just because I'm kind of really picky about the pants that I wear. I don't like dark wash jeans, so all my pants are kind of medium to light wash. Okay, I'm going to go with a pretty long piece of floss here. So it just... Move that out of the way. So I can do this. I still don't know what this is for. This might be something to do with casting off your stitches. Because this is like a, a clasp. I know a lot of people like to call these crochet hooks. These are not crochet hooks. Okay. This, I'm dispelling the myth right now. Okay. This is not a crochet hook. This is a crochet hook. I know a lot of people that wear weaves will call these crochet hooks because that's the method that they use to put them in their hair with, but this is not a crochet hook. Stop calling them crochet hooks. This is a crochet hook. And my camera does not like them. It will never focus on them. Camera, please. For once, just focus. Anyways, you get the point. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this and then I'll start the weaving. Alright, so for the end of this one, to weave it off, I didn't watch the video on how to weave it off. I just, this, um, was the top side. So I just took, I had, like, quite a considerable amount of thread left. Why? 
is the camera not want to focus? I might actually have to use my actual camera for this in the future. So I just uh, wove the ends through each loop that I had left, and then I just went ahead and pulled this off, the plate part. I just went ahead and pulled this off, and then I just sewed it to the pants. So each loop was just weaved through the pants, and then the ends that I had left, because I had all those little tails sticking out, I just pulled them under here, and I secured them each with a little knot. So hopefully, it won't come out. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. I obviously have to do both thighs because it rubs together on both sides. So I- oh, there is just a random needle sticking out of my pants. That's fun. So I'll go ahead and do the other side and then meet you back after that's finished. I guess. I got one on each side. I got one on each side. Okay, I set the pants aside for a second just because I want to finish Luigi. Luigi! I have to take all the pins out of his overalls and the yarn out of his face. And then he'll be done. Every, there's something about every time I make this that it just comes out not quite right. I don't think I'm going to be making the Mario Brothers plushies anymore. But this is the last one I needed. I needed Luigi. I already have Mario, Princess Peach, and Toad. Anyways, I'm gonna take this stuff out now. Um, that, the whole point of doing that was to tighten the button, because it was kind of wiggly. Try that again. The point of doing that was because his button was floppy and I wanted it obviously to not be floppy even though it's secured to the overalls by being tied to the the strap and then this was glued to the front of the overalls so it's it's not definitely not coming off now. I think this is the first time though I've made this pattern fully correctly that he actually came out taller than Mario and not the same size as him. Also, I think when I put the hat on, I put it too far down, because now his head looks funny in the back. That made it look worse. Well, it's alright, because they're not real, so it doesn't matter, right? I guess that looks better. Just something, I think, I don't know. I do think this is going to be the last time I ever make these dolls, though, because they're fingers are only four stitches and they're so hard to make. So if I sell these, I will be selling the set for probably 250 or 300 just because they're worth that much. So now I'm going to go back to the pants. I didn't finish it, I just tossed them back there. Um, oh, and that Christmas light garland that you can't see? That I made that for Christmas. Wow, that's the wrong direction. 
I made that for Christmas. Christmas is over, so now it's just sitting on my bed. Okay, if you're willing to ignore the sudden appearance of a telescope behind me, so am I. So, I bought some yarn from Walmart, as I so often do. Um, a little less often now that I don't have a job. But I spent $10 on a cone of cotton yarn for my mom and finally made her the <clears throat> pantry bag holder she's been asking for for two years. And this is what the yarn came on, like this. It's like a, a coral, not coral, like it's just orange, yellow, and white on a, on here. And so I was like, what do I do with this? I don't want to throw it away because it's actually, like it's pretty sturdy. I could squeeze it and it doesn't, it doesn't cave in. And I was like, what could I make out of this? At first I thought of turning it into like a garden gnome and this would be the base of the hat. Obviously there would be yarn on it. And I was like, that's so much work. And I was like, okay, I could turn it this way, make it like a bouquet of flowers. But that's so much work. And I was like, an ice cream cone! That's exactly what this looks like. So I'm gonna turn this into an ice cream cone. Do you see that thing? Floating right there? What is that? Probably a feather. Uh, so I have brown yarn here. I'm gonna start with the cone, because I think getting the measurements of how many... It's, it's still here. It's just floating in front of my face now. I think getting the measurements of, like, for the yarn to fit exactly on here is going to be, I wish all my fingers would, okay, there, it's going to be not challenging, but it's probably going to be time consuming to make sure every stitch has the perfect amount of stitches in it. And since it's not perfectly pointy here, my, I almost called this a snow cone, my ice cream cone is going to... It's not going to focus because I have it set to focus in a certain spot on the screen. But you can see that it's not perfectly pointy. It is going to be flat on the end. Unless I can find something to put in the bottom. I probably honestly could just poke polyfill through to the end. Because it is, um... Like there's a hole in it. So I'm going to start on that. Am I going to write down my pattern? No. Probably never will I have another one of these in my possession unless I buy that specific yarn from Walmart again. I don't even remember what the, the brand was. I think it was like peaches and cream or something. Um, so, I'm going to start on that. I finished my pants. They're hanging out back there. Drying. I put some craft glue on the, the knots of the yarn. Of the embroidery floss so it will stay in better. Um, I really hope that works. That was the first time I'd used that mini darning weave thing. It's called a speed weave if you're looking into buying one. I think, well I got mine for Christmas, so my mom probably got it from Amazon. Um, I don't know how much it was. It came with a lot of accessories, so I'm willing to bet it was probably around 30 to 40 plus probably if you're looking into getting one. Um, that's what they're called, a mini darning loom or by brand, they're called Speed Weave. Speed, W-E-V-E. -E. So, I'm going to start with the brown yarn for the cone, and then we will choose the ice cream colors together. Okay, we're not going to know this anymore. My mom bought this for me from the Salvation Army because I have always wanted a decent telescope. I get it home, take it outside, and try to use it. Can't see because there's clouds outside because it's trying to be winter right now in California. And I realized that everything is blurry once I bring it back in to realize that it is missing the lens that goes in the point on that side. It's missing the lens. So when I was trying to zoom in and out, it was just staying blurry. And I was like, every time I find something I want and get it home, even though I inspected it in the store, it's everything I want is either broken or missing pieces. <laughs> And it's so irritating because I've always wanted a telescope. I had one when I was a kid and somehow it, the lens got cracked and I couldn't see out of it anymore. Also this scope on top, I don't know why, but it it's upside down. 
not like in the actual scope itself. Like even if I loosened the bolt and rotated it, it wouldn't be right side up. Inside the lens, I can't point. Help, oh, help. Okay, the one on top. <laughs> the one on top is when you look through it. The picture you're looking at is upside down. I don't know why. So I'm gonna. Salvation Army doesn't do returns. So I'm gonna see, or my mom's gonna see, or we're gonna go together. She has the receipt. I put the price tag back on it. We're gonna see if they will do a return because they, they sold it with missing pieces. Obviously, if I would have known it was missing pieces, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, actually, my mom, I wouldn't have let her buy it for me. If not, that if they'll do some form of store credit, if it turns out to be all sales final like the receipt says and they won't do anything for it um, then I one of us is going to try to sell it probably on offer up uh, because it the price to buy just a lens or a lens set is more than what my mom paid for it she got it for 25 which is a really good deal for a telescope telescopes are so expensive um, the only kit of lenses that I saw that looked like they would fit in this was $58. So it's not even going to be like a worthy investment because if they come from Amazon and they don't fit and then we have to send them back and reorder different ones and no. So it's a Bushnell Banner Astro 400. So I'm going to start on this now. Okay, this is about, well, not about halfway. It is halfway. So, I'm going to try to finish this up tonight, and then tomorrow I will start on the ice cream scoops themselves. Alright, so last night I, I got the cone shape made, and I don't understand why I didn't finish it off last night. Probably because I was going to wait till this was dry. I don't want the stuffing to go into the cone that's going to be in the scoop. So I just glued a piece of paper onto here. Um, and in the little gap right here where the yarn was tucked into, I filled that with glue too just so it wouldn't be open. So now this is going to go on here like this. This kind of reminds me of those ones that are like... What's the brand of those? Oh, they're literally called drumsticks. Because they come in a blue wrapper sometimes. So this is my cone. My base. Um, if I wanted to, I could take darker brown yarn and make like squares on here like a waffle cone. But I'm not about that, so I'm not going to. So this is what I have so far. And uh, I will finish this off. You can see it's a little short here on the side, so I might just do some slip stitches and bring it around. Um, what color should I do for the ice cream? Don't look at my bed, it's kind of a mess. I was doing some rearranging today of book shelves and stuff, so that's that. I'll have to look through my yarn and pick the colors of the ice cream to go with this. Okay, I have not decided a color yet because I was finishing this. Um, now, most people would probably do pink for strawberry. I don't like strawberry ice cream. Okay. Um, maybe my favorite is chocolate chip cookie dough, but that's boring. So maybe I'll do like mint chocolate chip. Yes, I like my toothpaste flavored ice cream. Okay. So, um, hmm. 
I could do a variegated yarn and make up my own fake flavor of ice cream. Maybe I'll do that. I'll have to look. I have a lot of yarn. I'm trying to clear out my yarn stash so when I get a job, I can buy a bunch of more yarn. Uh, so that's why I've been making so many things lately. Even just this, the garland that's there.
Boo. I bet you didn't expect me to be behind there, did you? This is what I got thus far. It looks a little plain, but I feel like I use such radical colors that I don't know what color I would put sprinkles on here with, or like a, a cherry. I wanted to put a cherry on here. Um, I would probably have to do white, honestly, is what I was thinking. To do white sprinkles, but I'm gonna figure that out tomorrow, so. Okay, it is now the next day. I think white sprinkles are gonna suit this the best. Looking at it after I finish it, it looks really goofy just plain like this, so it definitely does need something else on it. Even though these colors are so crazy, they're a little more true to, to color here on the front camera than the back one, which is weird. This teal color is the one that was showing up as the blue one that I started with. So that's how wrong they were. They're a little more right on here. Um, actually, they're, they're pretty much accurate, except for this is more purple than it looks on here. So I got my white. And I'm gonna make the sprinkles. Okay, I finished it. This is probably gonna be the end of the video. Um, even with the sprinkles, it still felt kind of incomplete. So I added a little cherry on the top. I think the white sprinkles were a good decision. I think any other color would have just blended in too much. I thought about doing black, but who has black sprinkles? If I ever buy that same brand of yarn again from Walmart, I'll have another one of the cone shapes, so I could always make another one with actual regular ice cream colors, but this is the end. So now I get to sit probably for two hours and edit all of the video footage. Yay me. That's how I'm going to spend my New Year's Eve. Yay. Although I do think this came out super cute. The way I made it look like actual cones, like cones, scoops, was that... When I sewed it, I did back loops only, so I could crochet in the front loops and just single crochet and make it look like actual, actual, hold on, actual scoops on there. I tried slip stitch, that was too, too tight, it looked weird, and I tried uh, half double crochet and it was kind of too droopy, so I landed in the middle at single crochet, and I think it looks the best, so. This is the first thing I've crocheted in a long time where I thought that I would keep it for myself because it's so cute. Usually when I crochet stuff, it's either for the intention of selling it or just putting it out in the bin that I have in the garage, but this I might keep. This is really cute. Oh, and I did three scoops because I wanted it to be proportionate to the cone. The cone is quite big. Excuse me. Knock over my water bottle. Stop it, please. Let's see. The cone with the tip, because as I like, showed you, it's not pointing down here. So, the cone itself is about 8 inches, because it, it's actually under, right here where the first scoop is, is where the scoop and the cone is sewed together. So 8 inches, and I wanted to make the scoops look proportional-ish. This is about 6.5 inches, so I wanted to make it, I was going to stop at 2 scoops, but I thought 3 would look better. And the fact that... Okay, this, this is the back. So this is the front. I'll show you guys the front. The fact that the scoops are a little offset, which I didn't want, to me just makes it look more natural. This. I thought about putting it right in the middle, but I was like, no, because then it would look like just another scoop of ice cream. Um, I didn't want that. And then I just trimmed the green green yarn to make it stand up. It uh, I tied it onto a button and then just fed it through the magic loop or circle to make it stand up in the middle so it's done and I am very happy with it I actually like genuinely might keep this one and find somewhere to put it I like this I wish I could find just the cardboard cone that is starting up because this this I don't know it's cardboard but it's like so hard that I can't I can't even squeeze it and make it be concave so I don't know, but I like it. Okay. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, Happy New Year. Like I said, if I don't cut that part out and rearrange it. Um...
Brutus, are you mad at me? What's the matter? Let go. Let, let go. Get off. What are you doing? I think I know what you're doing, and it's kind of gross. Please stop. Well, now I'm concerned. That's not normal. What are you doing? What? Okay, anyways. Okay, butt wiggling is either a sign of one or two things. Being manly, ready to breed, or constipation. So I immediately rushed him to a warm bath, and he did poop. Feeling much better. I think he was a little impacted or constipated. But he's, he's better now. He's all right.